Hi, my name is Todd Dust, and I'm an Applications Engineer at Cypress in the PSOC Group. Today, I'm going to be teaching you how to create a state machine out of UDBs using the UDB Editor. In order to demonstrate this state machine working, we're actually going to control some traffic lights. So as you can see here, I have a board, and this board has an intersection on it, and it also has traffic lights. So it has a red, a yellow, and a green light. You'll see this working in a second. This is the CY8C Kit 052 traffic light controller board. I'm also going to be connecting this to the SparkFun FreeSock 2 board. So these are the hardware platforms that you need in order to do what I'm going to be doing in this video. So I'm going to connect these together now. All right. So in order to create our state machine, we're going to create a custom component inside of a library. If you don't know how to create a library, you can refer to my video on creating a simple counter. And in that video, I discuss how to create a library. I'm just going to use the same library I used in that video to add in this new component. So we're going to go in, and we're going to add a new component item. And we're going to use the UDB document, and we're creating a state machine. So I'm going to call this state machine. And I also want to make sure that I'm targeting the correct device. I'm going to say create new. And now we have our UDB canvas. And I'm going to actually drag state machine elements on. So in this example, I'm going to be turning on the red, green, and yellow lights. So I need three states. The first state, I'm going to call my red state. So I'm going to give it a name red. The second state, I'm going to call green. And then the third state, I'm going to call yellow. I'm also going to define an input. So as you can see, there's already a clock input. And I'm going to define a new input called change. And what change is going to do is it's going to change between the different states. So as you can see, I can drag a wire from the red state to the green state. And when it goes gray, it's connected. And it brings up this configure transition dialog. And I'm going to say change. So whenever change is high, it will transition from red to green. And then I also want to do a transition from green to yellow. And I also want to transition on change. And then lastly, I want to transition from yellow to red. So I will do the same thing. All right. So now whenever change is high, we move from one state to the next. So now we need to define some outputs for these states. So we can turn on our red, green, and yellow lights. So inside of each state, I'm going to set up some variable assignments. So I'm going to call one red underscore out. And in this state, since this is the red state, I want that to be high. I'm also going to set up a green underscore out. And this, in the red state, we don't want the green light on, so it's 0. And the same with the yellow, 0. All right, and then I'm going to have to do this in all of my states. So in this state, it's green. We don't want the red on, but we do want the green on. And then lastly, we'll do the yellow state. And this state, we only want the yellow on. So all the other ones will be 0. And then I also want to set the first state that's run. So since this is a traffic light, we want it to initialize to red to be safe. So if I click on the red state, there's a little checkbox, is start state. So we're going to select that as the start state. So every time the device is reset or the component is reset, it will start as red. All right, the last thing we need to do is we need to set our outputs. So I want a red output. So I'm going to call it red light. And I'm going to set that to red underscore out. And then I'm going to do green. Set it to green underscore out. And then the same with yellow. All right, so now I have my input set up. I have my output set up. And I have my state machine set up. So I'm going to generate my symbol. So again, right click on any white space and select Generate Symbol. And now you have your state machine symbol. So I'm going to say Save This. And now we need to actually link this to a project. So we're going to open up a new project, and we're going to use the component. I'm going to create a new project. Select PSOC 5, and I'm going to call this State Machine. I'm going to set it for the desktop. I'm going to say OK. 
Now I need to link to that library we created, which we do through the dependencies. So we right click on our project, go to dependencies, click on this folder. Then it was on our desktop and it's in the UDB library. So I'm going to go down to my UDB library. I'm going to open that up and I'm going to click on the .cyprj file. Say OK. When I do that, you'll notice that there's a new default tab in the component customizer. And if we go there, you'll notice that there's a component called state machine. So I'm going to grab that state machine component and I'm going to drag it onto my schematic. And what I also want to do is I want to set up three outputs that will trigger the three LEDs on this board. So we're going to search for digital output. I'm going to drag three of these on. Then I'm going to give them appropriate names. So this will be the red LED. This will be the green LED. And this will be the yellow LED. Now one thing that's actually important to note here is that these LEDs on this board are active low. So when they're driven low, the light turns on. And when they're driven high, the light is off. So what I need to do is I actually need to invert these outputs. So I'm going to select these, this guy and move it over, delete these wires, search for a NOT gate, drag him on, and connect a NOT gate to the output. I'm just going to copy this. And then wire it up. And if you're wondering how I'm doing the wire without clicking on any buttons, it's actually just by pressing the W on your keyboard. That brings up the wire tool. The other thing I want to do is I want to add an input for my change. So I'm going to search for digital input. I've got a digital input pin. And we're going to set this pin for resistive pull-up. The reason we do that is that the buttons on this board are active low, so when I press them, they go to ground, and when I release it, it's floating. So setting a pull-up resistor, make sure that it's high when the button is released. And I'm going to name it change underscore in. These buttons are also noisy, so we're going to add a digital debouncer to get rid of some of that noise. So I'm going to connect that up. And since we know that when the button is not pressed, it is high, and when it is pressed, it is low, we're going to look for a negative edge. So every time we see a negative edge, we want to run this change signal here. Then lastly, I need to add a clock to the debouncer. So I'm going to drag a clock over here. And I'm going to set it up for 10 hertz. So the slower the clock, the longer the debounce time. And I'm also going to run this clock to the clock input of our component. Now I've kind of squeezed things around, so I'm going to have to draw an ugly wire, but that's okay. All right, so now I have my schematic set up. So the last thing I need to do is define my inputs and my outputs. So I go to the .cydwr file, and I know that my button is on P20, so I'm going to select P20. I also know that the green LED is on P24, so I'm going to select that. The red LED is on P26, so I'm going to select that. And the yellow LED is on P25. All right, so our project is configured. We're going to save it, and then we're going to program it. And again, this project didn't require any code to be written. This is all done in hardware. So the way this project should work is when I press the button, the LEDs should change from red to green, green to yellow, and then yellow back to red. So after it's programmed, we can check to see if it's actually working. All right, so you can see that it started out as red. So if I press the button, it should go to green, and it went to green. If I press it again, it should go to yellow. If I press it again, it should go back to red. So there we go, red, green, yellow, red. So we've just now created a very simple state machine using the UDB editor, and we didn't have to write any code. Thank you again for watching.